Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon and today I'm giving my first thoughts on I'm Thinking of Ending Things. It was written and directed by Charlie Kaufman and based on the book by Ian Reid. It's also starring Jesse Plemons, Jesse Buckley, Tony Collette, and David Thewlis. The plot follows a young woman as she goes with her boyfriend to meet his parents at their house out in the country. It seems a little bit early to be doing that and honestly she actually has been thinking about breaking up with him but she ends up going anyway because she doesn't know how to say no. So she ends up meeting his parents and begins questioning everything she knew about him and her this movie is listed on IMDb as a drama thriller, and that's an accurate description of it because I wouldn't classify it as a thriller or a drama. It's somewhere right in the middle. It's just a perfect mixture of both. And I say that as a warning because if you're going into this movie expecting a full-blown thriller, you might be a little bit bored by it because it is very slow moving. But if you're going in expecting a regular drama about just families and how they interact with each other, don't just don't expect that because it's not that. So Charlie Kaufman, who like I said wrote and directed this movie, is definitely more known for his writing than his directing. He wrote Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, being John Malkovich, and Adaptation, as well as many more movies. He's got a very unique and odd, absurdist style of writing that is very good for artsy, intelligent dramas, melodramas. As far as I know, he doesn't normally do thrillers or anything close to horror like that, so this is a bit branching out for him. He also doesn't normally direct. He certainly has before this, but definitely not as frequently as he writes. So right off the bat, I want to say that I already knew that his writing was amazing. He wrote, like I said, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It's one of the best written movies ever. He definitely knows how to develop characters and scenarios equally brilliantly. But his directing in this is honestly equally impressive. It seems like he took inspiration from directors like Michelle Gondry and Spike Jones and other directors he's worked with and has a very similar style. The filmmaking is very actor-centric and very story-centric and these characters are brilliantly design. There's never a moment in this movie that the characters feel fake in any way. Everything feels real, it feels genuine, and that only heightens the story that is being told. It's like the polar opposite of the modern horror movie where you don't know or care about the main characters at all, so when horrific things happen, it's only entertainment, if even that. You're certainly not tense and you don't feel fearful for any of these characters in those movies. Unlike in this movie where you care about everything that's happening. But it's not just the writing, the acting is all great too, especially David Thewlis. I loved his performance in this movie. I'm generally a sucker for his acting and this movie was no different. And I'd honestly never heard of Jesse Buckley before this movie, but she put in a great performance in it. And if for whatever reason we need a new Velma, like Linda Cardellini isn't available or something, we should get her because, side note, she would be great at it. So I don't want to get into the story yet. I'll get into that more in a little bit when I get into the spoiler section, but before I do, I want to just say this. This movie was really, really good. And I do want to see it a second time before I really know how I feel about it because it is one of those movies that you need to see a couple of times to really grasp it but my honest first impression is my honest first thoughts are this might be the best movie to come out this year so far it honestly might be i'm leaning towards an eight or an eight and a half with this movie i really really liked it in case you didn't get that vibe from the first few minutes i love this movie now like i said this is only my first time watching it so i may discover more things about it that could either make me like it more or less i don't know but honest first impressions was it was just that good now it is weird it is kind of strange it's very kaufman-esque and if you haven't seen any of his other movies just a warning he has weird oddities in his writing. Whether it's in the way that he writes it or just in the story itself, there's always something weird about it and this movie is no different. All I can say is that after watching this, he has skyrocketed up into my list of most interesting people in Hollywood. I already knew that I really liked him as a writer, but now I know that I like, maybe even love him as a director. Long story short, I need to see more movies by him because he is a great filmmaker from everything I can tell. So that's all I had to say spoiler free, so please stick around if you're going to watch that, but if not, if you don't want anything spoiled, please remember to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. So, spoilers. Remember back when Capone came out and I gave my review on that, there was certain aspects of that movie that I liked. And one of the aspects that I liked about the movie was that it kind of hinted at having a dementia-based horror movie. And they kind of hinted at that, but they didn't really live it out. And then here we are. And I think that's what this movie was. Now, granted, I don't entirely know what this movie was. I looked at the synopsis of the book and it's slightly different, but I think we can have some clues here that I think 
that's what this movie is about. If you have other theories, feel free to put them in the comments below because, like I said, this movie is weird and complex, and honestly, it never gives you straightforward answers to your questions. It gives you a lot of information, but it doesn't give you answers. And I'm fine with that. I love that in a movie, and this movie does that, so let's talk about it. So my honest theory about this movie is that you've got this main character played by Jesse Buckley, but she's not really actually the main character. The main character is actually Jake, played by the other Jesse. And my theory is that this whole movie is in a dementia state, going through his memories, trying to figure out his life. Trying to figure out how each moment is placed in each time and how each scenario can actually add up to something. But he's been so obsessed with movies in his life that he's taken themes from movies and taken the plot out and put them into his own life because he can't remember what's real or not anymore. As well as Oklahoma, he said he saw that so many times because they put it on at the school every year and he's the janitor at the school so he's constantly being surrounded by this, this musical. He takes elements of that and puts out into his memories as well, such as the knife fight, the dancing, and the musical number at the end of the movie. So it does appear that there's a lot of evidence supporting my theory on that being the actual meaning of this story. However, that doesn't answer every question entirely. Like for the fact that the young woman is seemingly the main character for a large portion of this film. It seems like a lot of it is told from her perspective. And so maybe that's not entirely what this movie is, but on the flip side, now that I think about it, I think that still is right because the young woman is never given a name. She's given multiple names throughout the movie because he never actually met her. He never actually talked to her, at least he didn't in the book. And so I'm stealing from the book a little bit to give clues here that he never actually met her. He wished he asked for her name and number, but he never did. So in this one, she's never given a name and in different scenes, he calls her different things, but she never has an actual name in this movie. Hence why she's credited as the young woman. So you could then argue that all of these scenes of character development with her are simply him trying to create her character in his head, trying to better understand who she is and what she would be like. Now, I don't know if I completely buy that because there's certain aspects of it that don't seem to completely add up with that theory. Hence the part where she's talking to the janitor and she talks about how she doesn't... Holy shit. <laughs> Maybe that was a conversation that he had with one of the schoolgirls, and so his impression of her is based on a girl he met while janitoring at the school. She told him that he didn't... Oh my god, I figured it out! A girl told him, when he's older as the janitor, that she didn't want to be uh, the girlfriend of this guy. She was just afraid to say no, and so she kept saying yes and yes and yes, and now she's talking to him about it. And that's where he takes that idea and puts it into his version of his girlfriend! I think! I think, <laughs> I think that's what the movie's about. In which case, I love this idea. I love, 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 love this idea. And it's really strongly hinted at with other evidences in case you need more proof. The fact that the main character's father has onsets of dementia or whatever the other disease he listed was. That's usually something that you pass down in your genes so it makes sense that he would also have it. And then you also have the conversation that he's having with the girl about how people watch too many movies because they like the lies of the movie versus the harsh reality of life. They choose to look at the storyline in the movie as something that they would prefer to live in rather than the reality of their own life. And so obviously that was referencing what he was doing and a fear that he had that he was going to do and he ended up doing. So I think that that is what the movie is about, in which case that's something that I've often thought about and enjoy that idea. And it makes sense that... <laughs> Somebody who would write this movie would also write a movie that would be directly in line with my thinking because <clears throat> he is a great writer. I, I really like Kaufman. I really do. And this movie only further proved that. I'm not trying to say that this was as good as Eternal Sunshine. I don't think it was. I, like I've said before, Eternal Sunshine is a brilliant movie. One of my, my favorite movie of all time and one of the best movies of all time. This movie is peaking for me at an eight and a half, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong, eight and a half is amazing. And honestly, worst case scenario, this movie is a seven and a half. It's somewhere in there. And I would say probably closer to the eight, eight and a half area. But worst case scenario, this is a seven and a half. This movie was so good. And I'm sorry that these, <laughs> this is like the least structured first thoughts I've ever done on my own. 
But honestly, I'm talking through this movie as I'm thinking about it, and I love movies like this. So if you love movies where you have to have this conversation with yourself after watching it, what did I watch? What was that movie really about? What was it really saying? Then you're going to love this movie because there's so many things in this movie that is going to really inspire you and make you think and want to watch it again because as you're going to watch it again, you're going to be like, oh, the reason that that girl had you know, uh, something that she remembered was because it was from somebody else. This whole movie is taking place inside his mind, which can be drawn back to the line where he says, it's really good to go out into the country and go on a road trip because you realize that the world is bigger than the one inside your mind. There's so many little subtle things in this movie, and I don't want to say that it's the most subtle movie because it definitely makes you aware of the things that it's showing you while it's showing you. Like for instance, she walks into his bedroom and you see the urn filled with his dog's ashes and they like literally light it up. Now it's subtly lit up, but like if you're looking for it, you can notice that bright as a headlight, but you don't know why you're noticing the things that you are being made to notice. So it's not the most subtle, but still you will be seeing these things and not know why you're seeing them. You will be aware that you're being fed breadcrumbs, but you don't know why you're being given this bread. Like what does this add up to? And I had multiple theories going the whole time and one of them ended up being pretty accurate to what I think now, but that doesn't mean that this movie is predictable because it's not. It's definitely a thinker. It's definitely a puzzle that you have to figure out as you go and it's not like the hardest, it's not a black diamond puzzle, but it is a puzzle that is easy enough to pick up the pieces, but hard enough that you're going to enjoy putting them together. Analogies. <laughs> this review is awful. It's such a mixed bag of analogies, but my mind's a little scrambled right now from watching this, and that's a good thing. That's a great thing. I'm really relieved that a movie I watched in 2020 lived entirely up to my expectations for it. Because granted, my expectations for this were a bit vague. I went into it going, I like Charlie Kaufman. I hope he can put together a good movie. And by God, he did it. Yeah, I liked it. I really did. So um, it's on Netflix. So if you have Netflix, it's already there for you free. Well, it's not like the Mulan situation where you have to pay an extra $30 on top of your subscription. I'm not reviewing that movie, by the way, because I already know it's going to suck. I saw a lot of people, I saw a lot of critics review and be like, man, I was excited for this. Why were you excited for it? Have you learned nothing? Yeah, so if you have Netflix, go ahead and watch it because it's as every bit good as you could expect it to be. And if you're not on Netflix, find somebody who is and steal their account password. <laughs> this is a top five movie of the year in my opinion i think no matter what this movie i can't imagine is going to get knocked out of the top five this year so anyway thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it please leave in the comments below what you guys thought of the movie and of course don't forget to like share and if you're new here subscribe thanks guys bye that was a review <laughs>